Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Welcome in our bed and breakfast. Today we are in Deuteronomy chapter 25. At pag nagpapatuloy po ang ating pag-aaral sa journey of preservation ng mga Israelites. Why I call it a journey of preservation? Dahil unti-unti po na tutunan po natin at lalo po natin naiintindihan ang dahilan ng Painon sa bawat mga rules, sa bawat mga commandments na binibigay niya sa mga Israelite. And this is because of his love, because he wants to preserve the people of Israel. He wants to set them apart from the ways of the world, from the ways po ng ng darat nan po nila sa promised land so that they can be able to uphold the righteousness of God and in this way they will be preserved amen they will be preserved it's not about how hard they work it's not about how much they will gain from the promised land but it is them upholding the laws and the commandment of God ito po ang magiging susi so that they will have that life and they will enjoy the promised land. Amen. And in chapter 25, God gives them and Moses gave them another set of laws. And I entitled this chapter, Fear God. Amen. Fear God. Sabi po in verse 18, When you were weary and worn out, they went, met you on your journey and attacked all who were lagging behind. And they had no fear God. Sino po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon dito? He's talking about the Amalekites. Amen? He was talking about the Amalekites because the Amalekites, ano pong ginawa ng mga taong ito? They pursued the Israel even they were not provoked by the Israelites after, after po they crossed the Red Sea. This group and this group of people with their family, they were slaves, they have no armors, they have nothing to defend themselves. When they crossed the Red Sea, kahit po nakita ng mga Amalekites that they were there not to fight against them, still the Amalekites pursued them. And it's something that God hated. It is something po na, na, na it, God abhors against the Amalekites. Amen. Because the Amalekites, even if they saw the Israel weak, even if nakita naman po nila, na, no, they are not attacking them. But still, these people gave Israel, they put Israel to shame. Amen? And so that's why God remembered this. God remembers this. He always sees yung kapakanan po ng kanyang mga anak. Kaya naman po, sabi ng Painon, these people on how they have treated you in the wilderness, they did not fear me. Amen? At kaya naman po, sabi ng Painon, do not forget to blot them out, to destroy them completely. Amen? At bakit po ito, ano po naging dulot ng destruction ng buong Amalekites? The people that they are about to drive away, dun po sa kanilang pupuntahan at maging po sa wilderness, is that because these people, ito mga taong ito, they did not fear God on how they treated Israel. And so that is something that God wants us to understand today and is important thing sa Painon. We honor God, yes, but we need to learn to fear God in honoring men. And that is our title to today. As we honor men, dapat nandun po yung takot natin sa Diyos. The way we treat each other, even po the, as the Israelites go in, in, in the promised land, God wants them to treat each other and how they treat each other as fellow, fellow Israel, they need to fear God. Amen? Now, what are the things that God wants them to do? First point and verses 1 to 4 is be just in delivering justice. Amen? Be just in delivering justice. Sabi po dito, if you are a judge and there are dispute among people, the, 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 the dispute must be brought to court. Amen? And the judges must decide the case, acquitting the innocent and punishing the guilty. Amen? Dapat po meron pong pantay na justice. They need to deliver righteousness by giving the justice po in every dispute. And so, if the person is found innocent, they need to acquit 
whether they are poor or rich, whether they are influential or not. And same is true with those that are guilty. They need to be punished kahit po siguro marahil ano man yung posisyon nila sa buhay. As long as they were proven guilty, they need to go through the punishment. Amen? Na wala pong kinikilingan yung kanilang justice. And that in even in delivering justice, men must fear God. Amen? But even as they deliver justice, even among dun po sa mga guilty to those who have fallen short, the people of Israel must still preserve, they still need to give what is only due to the one who has ex- who did the wrong thing. Amen? Kung ano lang po ang nararapat na punishment, yun lang din po ang ibibigay nila. So that they will also need to preserve the honor, yung honor po ng guilty party. Amen? Hindi porket sila po ay guilty that they need to be fully be put to shame na, na natatang, natatanggalan na po sila ng karapatan. But you see, God, even to the guilty, God cares for them. God cares for them. So that this is the same way as God honors these people, as God is still has that heart for these people, God also wants His people, the people of Israel, to have the same heart to those who are guilty. If they were only given a 40 punishment, if only are deserving a 40 um, beating, dapat 40 lang po ang bibigay nila. Because if they go beyond that, sabi po dito, they will be degraded in the eyes of men. Amen? So maging po ang mga guilty, maging po yung nakagawa ng kasalanan, God says we need to still preserve their honor. Amen? Hindi dahil sila po ay nagkamali, hindi po dahil sila ay nagkasala, ay nagkakaroon na po tayo ng karapatan upang tanggalan po sila ng dignidad or to put them to shame. But instead, the Lord says, do not go overboard. Amen? Kailangan pa rin po silang irrespect. They are they are, are deserving still of respect. We need to still treat them as humans. Amen? We need to deliver justice. And this is what justice for God. Amen? And even in verse 4, sabi po dito, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Ano pong ibig sabihin to? When an ox is working, when an ox has to tread the grain, wag po nating busulan or i-cover ang kanilang mga bunganga. Because if they need to eat, if they are hungry, they can just eat the grain. Amen? Because this is something na they also deserve. They also deserve to eat. Even as animals, even if they are our workers, tulad po ng ox, they also deserving of what they need, lalo po sa pagkain. When they are working, dapat po sabi ng Panginoon, wag po silang talian, wag po talian ng kanilang mga bibig o takpan ng kanilang mga bibig. Because if they are hang- hungry, you need to feed them. You need to allow them to eat somehow. Eat, eat some of the grains. And this is how God sees even animals. So that's why God wants us to know, even the animals, we need to treat them right. Amen? E paano na lamang po ang tao? Amen? We need to treat even the animals right. When we say treat them right, it means to take care of them. Pag tayo po ay nag-decide na kumuha ng aso, nag-decide na kumuha ng pet, make sure we are responsible towards them. Make sure we give what is best to them. Amen? Hindi alis na lang po tayo, wala pong iniwan na pagkain, but we need to really treat them right. Amen? Give them proper shelter. Give them proper shelter. And this is the right way on how to treat the animals. Lalo na po if we are able. Amen? If we are not able, then do not get an animal na pababayaan lang po natin because the animals they also are life and God always wants us to preserve life we need to take care of them and do not take them for granted wag po tayong kukuha din po ng mga animals just to show off 
dahil ngayon ito po yung fad, dahil ito po lahat ng friends mo, meron, ng, meron na pong kahayupan sa kanilang bahay, dahil nainggit ka lang and you want one but you don't know how to take care of it. But you see, when you have an animal, it's like you are taking care of a human. Amen? You give them food to eat, you need to give them water to drink, you need to walk with them. No, Alam niyo yun? You need to be responsible. Paglalabas po at maglalakad po sila, dapat din po i-make sure po natin that we are, we have yung mga gamit para po panglinis sa kanilang pupu. And this is a, is a being responsible pet owner. Amen? When they also give birth, we need to take care of their need. We should not overwork. That means we need to give them rest, give them grace. Hindi yung puro trabaho, trabaho na lamang. Parang yung ox. If the boss doesn't want the ox po na kumain, he can just muzzle the ox. Pero God is saying, you need to give them food. Give, and the same thing, give them rest. Hindi po yung puro trabaho, trabaho lang. Amen? And we need to give them grace. Somehow animals, they are not humans. Amen? Alam naman po natin na Marami pa rin hindi magawa ang isang hayop compared sa tao. But sometimes when we treat them on how we expect them to respond to us, we treat them na parang dapat tao. Amen? So sometimes pag nagkamali sila, they poop on the wrong place. Minsan, alam nyo yon sa sobrang kasiyahan po nila, nakakamali din sila. And sometimes we punish them. Sometimes we talk so hard or alam nyo, we beat them so hard. But God says, we need to preserve the honor of these people. We need to preserve the honor even po ng guilty people and even animal. And this is how God wants us to treat them. We need to fear God in treating these people. Even in verse 5 down to verse 10, if brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside the family, and her husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. The first son she bears shall carry on the name of the dead brother so that his name will not be blotted out from Israel. Now, ito rin po ay isang importante sa Panginoon. As God wants to preserve the lineage of Israel, God says if someone died among the family at meron pa pong kapatid na lalaki na pwede pong mag-take over that, that brother needs to take over the responsibility of the brother and he needs to take over even for the family lalo na po pag wala pong anak yung asawa ng kanyang kapatid. Why? Because you know this is the calling of Israel to procreate. Amen? And it is to preserve, maging po yung ari-arian, lahat po that belonging to that person. Amen? So, the, the, the brother must rise up to take up the role. Ano pong role na ito? To become a kinsman redeemer. Amen? He needs to stand up as a kinsman redeemer and bring salvation towards po do sa lineage ng kanyang kapatid and also to bring... Uh, um, to, to, to save yung widow. Amen? To save the widow. Kailangan pong mag, mag-produce ng anak nung babae so that someone will continue yung line, yung pangalan po ng kanyang kapatid. And mostly, this is, is for the older brothers. Amen? And this is in response dun po din sa call ng Panginoon to pre- to preserve the bloodline of Israel. And at the same time, kailangan po magkaanak nung widow so that someone will also take care of the widow when she grows up. Amen? So ito yung mga bagay na bakit po nilagay ng painon ito as a law nung mga panahon na yun. And it's not easy. Lalo na pag yung brother may ibang gusto. Amen? Lalo na po yung brother magkakaanak ka pero hindi mo magiging anak. Because the child that, that, that your, the wife of your brother will bear, it will take, you, he will take yung, yung apelido, yung pangalan po ng kapatid mo. It will not belong to you. And it's not easy. It is not easy. But this is a sacrifice 
that men must do to honor their even their dead. Amen. And that is our, our second point. We need to honor our dead and even the widows. We do not take them for granted. This is for the sake din po ng buong family. Yes, because it is for the whole family. At the same time, when you will not take this responsibility, your whole family will also be put to shame. Amen? And so this brother, this kinsman redeemer must take up the responsibility. This is to honor the family, to honor the brother, and even to honor her sister-in-law. And this is honoring God. And this is fearing God. And this is a custom, if especially in the old times. It's no longer, today they no longer do that. Amen? Because like men are so many. But during those times, it was a custom in the beginning. So that the Israelites will remain to, to have po yung solid they will just be married among their family so that maging po yung kanilang mga yung kanilang mga ari-arian ay hindi po ma-divide differently or ma-subdivide ma ma in the tribes but they can preserve it among themselves in the tribe para po wala pong awayan that is how they can preserve their inheritance no mga panahon na yon and so the brothers they have a role to play amen and this is to preserve the honor of the family, preserve the honor of their dead and even the widows. And so today, what shall we also do? How do we respond to this call? Is that we need to also take care of the widows and the widowers to see their needs and respond to it according to our ability. Amen. Nasana po, if in the family there are widows, there are widowers, we also care for them, remember them according to how much, how can we help them. We need to respond to their needs. And at the same time, we need to take care of the weak. We need to take care of the weak and those who are in need. Just like po yung widow dito po sa chapter 25. Amen? Hindi po dahil namatay na po yung asawa nila, nahayaan lang. No. The brother must take responsibility towards the wife. Amen? So that the wife will bear a child. Because on those times, a widow and a barren woman, it's, they are shamed. They were put to shame. Amen? Isang nakakayang bagay, ang, ang, ang namatayan ng asawa, lalo na po kung hindi po kayo nagkaanak. And so to preserve the honor of the widow, the brother must take up the role to give her a son or a daughter. Amen? So this is how they need. It, it takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice to do it. And the same is true in our time today. For us to be able to honor others, sometimes we need to sacrifice our own selves. We need to sacrifice po yung, yung sarili po natin kagustuhan, our self-gain. And we need to lay down our lives for others. This is also what God desires for us. Amen? Kaya nga po, our topic nung Sunday, to be able to love. You know, we need to also give out that love. Na minsan po, kahit hindi po na-appreciate ng tao ang ating pagmamahal, we continue to love. And this is our self-sacrifice. This is a sacrifice of praise we give sa Panginoon. Same thing this man has to do for the family. But we need to do it. Third point, in verse 11 to 12, sabi po dito, if two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and he reaches out and saves him by his private parts, you shall cut off her hand, show her no pity. Amen. Third point, now I want to share, do not go overboard. Do not go overboard. Do not let circumstances to justify ourselves in doing immoral acts. Minsan po, we are facing circumstances po sa ating buhay na minsan po, we use it to justify, to reason out yung paggawa po natin ng kamalian. Just, uh, just like the wife. She wants to help the husband. Pero paano po siya tumulong in an immoral way. 
hinawakan po niya yung private part nung kalaban ng kanyang asawa. And this is so wrong. Amen? Mali po ito. Even if we say na, na he was, she was just trying to defend the husband. But what does God is saying to us and Moses is saying is that we should not go overboard. Even when we are being provoked, we should not shame others. Even even po minsan we are faced with with this provoke provocations or mga we are provoked by the circumstance or people we need to know how to respond to these circumstances we need to know how to uphold the righteousness of god kahit pa minsan po sa ating buhay maybe we are being oppressed maybe we are being you know, persecuted in our lives, but that doesn't mean that we fight according to how they fight us. It doesn't mean that when we are being shamed, we also need to shame them. In the measure that they give to us, is the measure that we give to them? No. But we need to learn to still honor them and fear God in the way we deal with these kinds of things in our lives. Pag tayo po ay pinrovoke, pag tayo po ay inaway, remember that the Bible tells us the biblical principle in how we face enemies in our lives is that the battle is not in the flesh, nor in the blood, not in the physical realm. But the, 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 the fight is in the spirit. Amen? And so that's why we need to, to pray for them. We need to ask God to be the mediator, to be the judge among us. Not that we be judge among and even po sa ating mga, sa, uh, against our brothers and sisters. Let us not go overboard. We can only defend and protect ourselves in a way that will not destroy others, but to preserve ourselves. Amen? Let us not go overboard. Yung tipong may ginawang kamalian po ang, ang, ang kapatid mo sa'yo or ang, ang ibang tao sa'yo, gusto po natin gumanti. We wanna take revenge. Amen? Kala mo, ikaw lang ha. Then mas gumagawa pa po tayo ng mas malala at sobra pa dun sa ginawa po sa atin. But brothers and sisters, let us learn to deal with these kinds of things with fear of God. Let us fear God, even how we deal with our enemies, even how we face the circumstances and difficulties in our lives. Let us fear God. Amen? At wag po natin ilagay ang justice sa ating mga kamay. Let us not put the justice in our own hands and allow God to judge between us. Verse 13 to verse 16. This is our four point do not have two different weights in your bag one heavy one light do not have two differing measures in your house one large one small you must have accurate and honest ways and measure weights and measures so that you may live long in the land the lord your god is giving you for the lord your god detests anyone who does these things anyone who deals this honesty now Fourth point, do not be dishonest in all things. Sabi po dito, wag po kayo magkaroon ng dalawang measurement. Anong ibig sabihin po nito? Kasi po dito po sa Metro Manila may dalawang measurement. May isang kulang sa timbang, may isang tama. Okay? Yung, yung, yung isang kilo na measure mo dun sa isang weight, pag measure mo dun sa tamang timbangan, nagiging kalahating kilo na lang. And many people does this, literally. Amen? Lalo na po dito sa Metro Manila, you can see those in the market, they drop the price, but the weights, yung weights, they will trick you with the weights po. But sabi po ng Painon, do not be dishonest. Kung meron mang dalaw, dapat meron po, is that we need to have this Honest measurement, accurate rate, amen? Hindi pwedeng dalawa yung ating pong pagbemeasuran or paglalagyan. 
Yung isang salop, pero iba yung salop niya. Di ba? So whenever he sees the chance, okay, lalo na pag makakita po sila, you know, ng tao na parang mukhang hindi po na nakapag-aral, they trick them. Amen? And this happens even po sa market, when you go to market and you were being dressed up, naka, nakadamit ka lang ng maayos, nako, delikado ka, magdodoble ang price. And we always experience that because we only have Sunday, most of the time, gabi po ng Sunday minsan, we always come from church and then diretso po mamalengke if we have a vacant time. At dahil nakadamit po kami, most of the time, the price goes up. Pero pag kami nakadamit, naka-dress down po kami, naka-shorts, nakapang, alam nyo na, mga ordinary days, the price goes down. And this is how they do it. They have a different measure among those who think they are unable and those who are able. At minsan, they judge on how you, you dress up. And so this is not God's will. Kung ano po yung yung market, kung ano po yung price sa market, it should yun po sana ang you offer whether they are poor or rich. They need they, we need to treat them the same. Amen. Hindi yung we take advantage kasi aka, feeling natin meron pa tayong makukuha sa kanila. And this is still extortion. We extort even for we extort even the rich. Amen. But let us be honest in what we do. Amen? Even on how we treat people, pag mukhang mahirap, minsan ine-echepera natin. When pag mukhang, mukhang medyo dressed up or mukhang mayaman, we give all our affection, we give all our attention, we give the best seat. But know that the command of God is, it's different. We need to treat the rich and the poor the same. Not that we look down upon the rich, but we look at them the same, treat them the same. Amen? We need to honor them the same. Amen? Because they have the same dignity. And so they deserve the same honor. Even, and how do we apply it in our lives? Even in cell groups. We need to treat those, even po yung mga makukulit, even po no mga hindi nakikinig, we still give time with them. Not that we only give time dun po sa mga okay po sa atin, those who give something to us. No, but they are our children. We need to treat them the same. And this is how we show how we fear God in our lives because we know God sees. God sees our measurements. God sees how we treat each other. Amen? We need to honor everyone equally. And this is how we fear God. Just like how we treat God, we need to treat men the same. Kung paano po natin gusto i-honor ang Panginoon, we need to honor each other the same. Amen? Because God wants it and desires for us to give kindness sa bawat isa. And lastly, and this is the conclusion, is that in verse 17 to 19, we need to fear God. Fear God and be blessed. If we do not want to be destroyed in our lives, we need to learn to fear God. Just like the Amalekites. The Amalekites put the Israelites to shame. They dishonor these people, and so they dishonor God. Why? Because they don't fear God. They did not fear God. The God that Israel represents. Amen. So what God says, he will not forget to remove and destroy this whole nation. We need to fear God. Fear God means revere and worship God as we treat each other. Kung paano din po natin ibinibigay ang best natin sa pen, we also need to give our best in treating others. Amen? Hindi yung kung sa church lang, maayos tayo sa church. Sa labas, naku, nakikipagbardagulan din po tayo. Pag nasa labas po tayo, may sarili po tayong mundo, hinuhubad po natin yung ating pagkakristyano. And we think, we think, we, we speak, we work, and we do something as if we don't fear God. 
as if there is no God that can see and will judge us. But what God is saying, there is a God that sees and will judge everything. The way we love God, we love men. Because this is the beginning of wisdom. When we learn to fear God in everything that we do, in all our ways, this is how men can be preserved. It's not about earning a lot of money. It's not working so hard. But we today understand, how can God preserve us? We need to fear God in all our lives. In this time and the world we're living in, where everyone run after selfish gains, everyone wants to trick one another, everyone wants to take advantage and to take opportunity against each other. As Christians, Deuteronomy chapter 25 is a reminder po sa atin. Let us not run after selfish gains. God wants us to fear Him, not men, not the pressures of this world. Marahil, we fear what kind of future we may have because of our fear po. We want to take every opportunity to take advantage of others. But today, God is saying to us, let us fear God. Let us not fear God. Let us, let us fear God and not the circumstance around us. Minsan po, dahil po sa takot po natin sa mga circumstances, takot natin sa future, takot po natin, para sa ating pamilya, minsan pumapasok po tayo sa mga maling desisyon sa ating buhay. Sometimes po, we make yung mga mali na mga gawain sa mundong ibabaw. Because this is how the world does. Ikaw na lang ang hindi nag-iiba ng weight ng measurement mo. Ikaw na lang ang hindi nagtataas ng sobrang taas sa presyo ng paninda mo. Or ikaw na lamang po yung nagiging yung upholder ng justice. When people always want to take advantage. And even today, people take advantage of the law. They use the law that is supposed to put men equally. They use the law to take advantage of one another. But what we need to uphold is not the justice of the land, but the justice of God. And what is the justice of God? The justice of God is always talk about grace. God is a just God and, he up God, and He upholds righteousness. Amen. But you know, as He upholds righteousness, He gives grace. Parang tayo po. We are supposed to be guilty of our sins. We are supposed to be, for, to bur to be burned out to hell. We are supposed to be doomed to destruction. Pero alam niyo po yung justice ng Panginoon? Though we have and we experience consequences of our sins, but God always is faithful to forgive us. And this is His justice. And today, we are fighting for what is right, for what is equal. Dapat pantay-pantay lang. Pero alam niyo po yung justice ng Panginoon? It is full of grace. And so today, we can even read this Deuteronomy 25. It is all because of the justice of God, which is full of grace. And so what does God wants us to understand and remind us today? Let us pursue the justice of God. And the justice of God comes with grace, comes with honor, even po sa undeserving, even to the guilty, even to animals, even to widows, even to the weak, even to the poor, even for us as sinners. The justice of God, we experience it in grace. And so I pray that today in chapter 25, it reminds us to uphold still righteousness and kindness and grace among sa bawat isa po sa atin. And so that may the Holy Spirit help us, help us to take our stand and position as Christians who fear God today, the only way our life can be preserved. Amen.
Let us all pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are the God who loves us. You are the God who wants to preserve us. You want us, Lord, to be set apart. You want to save us from the wickedness of the world. And so that, God, today we receive your word in Deuteronomy chapter 25, that we may fear you and that we be preserved. Oh, Lord God, today I pray for all the things that are happening around us, for all the difficulties and the circumstances that we are facing. Painon marahil po ang iba po sa amin. We are being persecuted. Maybe some of us, oh God, we are being deceived. Some of us, Lord, has gone through a lot of difficulties in this life that molds us to become strong, molds us, Panginoon, to embrace, change us to embrace the ways of the world. Mga bagay, Panginoon, na marahil nagpahirap po sa amin. And we begin to, to think that, Panginoon, kung hindi rin po namin gagawin ang mga gawain sa mundo na ito, kami, Panginoon, ay malilipo. Or sa aming mga buhay, Panginoon, we will be always be taken advantage. And so, we respond. We follow the ways of the world. We go with the flow. And we don't treat each other right. We extort one another. We are dishonest against each other. We destroy and quarrel against each other. We shame one another. We always fall into fights. We always uphold justice in the, in the eyes of the world. We always want to defend ourselves. We want to always get what we want according to our self-gain, according to our selfishness. At maging painon sa pagkuha ng aming kagustuhan. Painon, minsan hindi po namin namamalayan na naapakan na po namin ang Madalas, Panginoon, we turn out to be like the people of the world. At ang iyong righteousness, your righteousness is no longer seen in us. We are not different from the world because the way we respond to the circumstances, we walk like the unbelievers. We walk and do things as if there is no you. As if there is no God who sees us and who will bring everything to justice. Lord God, today, I pray that you forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, of our wrongdoings. Forgive us, Lord, on our own, on our wrong and twisted mindset. May you heal us, O oh God, so that all the difficulties, all the sufferings, everything that the, the world and even men, we may have been treated unjust. We, have, we may have been abused and maltreated in the past. Lord God, I pray today that may you heal our hearts so that these experiences, so that all these things, Panginoon, that have hurt us, that have a lot of influences on who we are today. Lord, may all may all of it be healed. May you take away all the hate. May you take away all the spirit of revenge. May you take away all the anger and hostility in our hearts and help us to forgive. Help us to forgive. Help us to receive that grace of forgiveness so that we can learn to return go of our hatred. We can learn, oh God, to let go of the pains in the past so that we can stand in your mercy. We can stand in your grace. And this is your justice. When men always try to fight for equal rights, Jesus, you did not. You did not fight for your own rights. Even if you are unguilty, you took up all the punishment and you have sacrificed your life for the sake of us sinners. 
Lord God, help us that we can walk in this path of grace and mercy. That we can forgive and we can lay down our lives for others. Because you said there is no love than this. There is no greater love than this than to lay down our lives for others. Help us to also love even our enemies. And it's not an easy work, Father. But you have done it. You have done it. You have accomplished, Lord, and you have turned all the hate of men into love. So that today we receive also grace. Oh Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to come and enter in everyone's heart to heal and release that love. Release that love today so that God in Deuteronomy chapter 25 we can fear you. We can uphold your righteousness. We can honor you, Lord, as we treat each other right and in grace and kindness. Lord, we thank you. May you restore and rebuild our relationship. Allow us, O oh God, to embrace even the weakness of others. Can accept them in their weaknesses, O oh Lord that in this life we know we may experience a lot of suffering and difficulties in standing in your truth in standing in your grace but we know we are walking in the path of blessing we are walking and receive the preservation that comes from you you will preserve us and bless us it is you who will judge among it is you who will reward every sacrifice. And so, Lord God, I thank you that today each one of us receive your word. That we, our lives will never be the same again. Transform us to be like you so that in this modern world, we can shine the light. We can show, Lord, grace and kindness. We can kill and destroy the selfishness the wickedness of the world to shining Lord your good ways your mercy for others Lord I thank you I thank you God for each one of us Lord we know that you will be the one to be the center in every relationship I bless everyone as they desire Lord to give their lives for your sake for the sake of others as they are willing to respond to your call of love. Let, raise them up as a warrior, God. Raise them up, O oh God, so that in our time today, we can uphold, Lord, your truth. And your truth brings, Lord, salvation. Your grace and your love will bring salvation to this world that we are living in. Father, we thank you. I release your blessing to each one of us. I release blessing to their relationship and that in everything that they do, as they work truthfully, as they walk justly, Father, may they be blessed in everything that they do. May you be honored. May you be glorified in our lives and that may the people see us as a God-fearing people. They will see in our good works, Father that we are your followers and we are your children. Be glorified in our lives and we thank you. We give you back all the praise and the glory and this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless po and see you again tomorrow for a morning devotion. God bless po.
Thank you.